Greetings, my lovelies, and welcome to the season premiere of Critiquing the Critics. Today's subject, Heisu Otaku. And back to me. You might be thinking, but Marshall Horror, she wasn't in the season 4 lineup. Yeah, well, shut up. Anyway, Heisu Otaku is the host of a web show known as the Heisu Otaku Anime Review, which I presume focuses on the gaming industry. Oh, she reviews anime? Well, what in that title suggests that she reviews anime? Seriously, Asu, next time name your show something that's a little less cryptic, or at least make sure that your review series is reviewed by someone a little less stupid. Wait a minute, I'm the one doing the review. Well, that actually sounds about right. So, anime, yeah, I'm not the target audience. Even though I've seen a handful of movies and shows that I've liked, I wouldn't call myself interested in the medium as a whole. Your selection of genres is wide, so you can expect action, comedy, romance, and of course... God damn it, Japan. <laughs> but since I have no desire to watch the majority of these shows, she is already at a disadvantage. Well, maybe she's humorous. No, she's actually very analytical. This sounds like it's going to be a chore. And quite frankly, I was bored. She's dull, humorless, and the reviewing itself... Oh, I'm just kidding. She's awesome. I just figured that the setup made it a bit too obvious that I was leading into a positive review. Psych. Actually, she represents everything that I currently love about video reviewing. I'm not that interested in what she reviews, yet I'm always drawn into her critique. I'm obviously no expert on anime, but after watching her videos, I feel like I've eaten from the tree of knowledge of anime weird analogy. I almost feel confident enough to do my own anime reviews. Furthermore, she rejects the caustic critic mold and does her own thing, reviewing good and bad titles alike. I found her videos to be incredibly interesting, and since there is no you in I, that means all dissenting opinions do not exist. Only my beliefs matter. But let's bring up the reviewer Triforce anyway and do some analyzing of our own. Obviously, she puts the most emphasis on informing the viewer and critiquing the show. She'll open with the plot of the subject, describing the story in detail, but being sure to stop before things get too spoilery. It's enough, as you feel like you understand the story without being overexposed to it, which gives credibility to any subsequent criticisms or praises regarding the script. When she does begin the reviewing portion of her video, she usually starts with the animation, and this is where she shines the most. She discusses character models, where the studios cut corners, Corners, the color scheme, foregrounds, backgrounds, and much, much more. I've never seen the animation itself broken down to this extent. She'll also discuss the pacing, the tone, the score, and how effectively the music is used, the voice acting, and of course she'll critique the story itself. But her finishing touch has to be when she tackles the subject on its own turf. If your anime is mostly about fan service, she'll explain why it works or fails on that level. If the anime is being psychological, she will metaphorically get into a kung fu stance and allow the anime to use the weapon of its choice. Yes, her own personal biases will show up. For example, she doesn't like Gorn, but she'll acknowledge when she's not the target audience and is very honest about her opinions. She caps this off with information about the people behind the anime, supplemental material, etc. The writing is brilliant, her information is very well organized, and it's obvious that she knows a lot about anime. It shows in every sentence, no, every word. But because her reviews are dense with information, it's up to her delivery to keep me from boredom. She succeeds and her performance is interesting because she doesn't suffer from flaws that drag down most video critics. She doesn't over-enunciate, like I do. She doesn't overact, also like I do. Nor does her line reading ever feel flat. Okay, this review is beginning to piss me off, but that's me too. She also doesn't have any STDs. Uh, f*** you, script. She sounds perfectly natural when she's doing her voiceover, pacing herself in a way that she never speaks too quickly, or slowly. Every word sinks in for maximum impact. This is even more impressive when you consider how articulate she is. She uses a lot of that fancy word speak, but she at least acts like it's part of her everyday vocabulary. She might be well-spoken, but she isn't necessarily flaunting her intelligence at us. Unlike somebody else I get to review soon, I'll give you a hint as to who they are. 
They love Star Trek, and their reviews are like three years long. Here is a clip that I believe showcases her strengths in delivering her critique. On the technical side of things, FMA was an early Bones effort, so it shows some harsh edges and irregularity in the character models now and again, but for the most part looks really nice. Action scenes are slightly restrained off and on, and you could tell they had budget limitations in some of those 51 episodes, but the quality is never a distraction due to Bones pacing their restrictions well. And when they do pull out the stops, they really pull them out. Of particular note is the use of lighting throughout the show, something I don't tend to mention in most reviews, but it's done so well in FMA. The time of day, specific environment, and tone, from bleak to inspiring, are always incredibly well reflected through the use of color and shading in this show. Along with the deftly cinematic direction, it gives the story more life than even the often solid animation itself. See, that was so good that I almost feel depressed because anything I ever say from now on will seem so inadequate in comparison. Damn, Jesu or Jesu or Hesu. I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce your name, but I am sure that that was some of the finest critiquing I've ever heard since starting this show. So let's move on to the humor. She says in her opening titles that her reviews are unofficial and silly to boot. She'll always open with a sketch and sometimes end with one, and those are silly, but they don't really embody the entirety of the review, which makes her a liar. If I were to compare her skits to anybody's, it would to be either Wii Viewer or Shitcase Cinema. They aren't especially well written, produced, or acted, but she's having a lot of fun doing them, and that is rather contagious. I know, they're superfluous, but I almost feel that if they were moved them, the reviews would seem a little lifeless. They have their charm. But I have to say, I think she's at her funniest when she adds a humorous twist to her criticisms, like this. So, there are these breasts attached to these high school girls named Aya and Natsume. See, she's making a statement about the extent of their characterizations, but she does so in a way that makes it amusing. That is my favorite kind of comedy to be found in video reviews. Describing her acting, yeah, I blow at segues, but a good day to die hard was really bad, is difficult because she isn't taking her skit seriously. But I do believe that she is one of the better reviewers when it comes to interacting with other people. I've liked the majority of her crossovers, even the one she shared with the Nostalgia Critic. And it's not easy holding your own against a strong personality like Doug's. Now, some of you might be thinking, But Marshall Horror, didn't you pan her performance into Bodley Flea? Well, that is a good question. What the fuck am I doing? Yeah, I did, but I blame the role more than her acting abilities. She was just playing a very annoying character whom I may or may not have wanted to chase around with a nail gun. I thought she herself did fine. Anyway, back to her reviews, she is accompanied by subtitles, which she refers to as the Red Snark titles, which provides its own commentary on the anime. Sometimes they're serious, sometimes they're funny, sometimes they move so quickly that I couldn't even tell. Stop. Forcefully kissing girls and Benzai. It is rapey. Well, that is great advice, but here is a clip where the subtitles are just way too fast paced. Spending forever psychoanalyzing and background scouring Asuka and Ray, only to cast them aside as handy plot devices in the movie, who suddenly don't remember all that stuff they were ruminating on uselessly for episodes and episodes. Ray having a large fandom in particular astounds me. She has the personality of a 2 by 4 making her just another clean-slated mouthpiece Anno can use and does use to preach at us without working it into the plot anywhere. You may have watched that and thought, that's not so bad. Well, this might surprise you, but I am a little slow. You don't look very surprised. Wait, you mean I've been talking to my webcam and not a live audience? Huh. Anyway, I know the thought of me being anything less than perfect has never crossed your mind, but it is true. Don't get me wrong, I could read them without issue, but sometimes it is at the expense of hearing what she's saying and vice versa. My brain cannot always process both at once. Which is kind of a shame, because when I actually look at them, they are pretty clever. With all of this said, the snark titles do at least keep me on my toes, which is weird as I always watch videos sitting down. So maybe this isn't really a criticism as much as it is a warning. Or maybe it's just me. On the technical side of things, see what I did there? It was a homage. Yeah. 
Like most that got the glasses of viewers, her videos were initially rather crude in the production values department. But as time went along, she acquired a better mic and camera, making her works much nicer to look at and easier to listen to. Unlike most that got the glasses of viewers, there isn't much in terms of spectacle, although occasionally something of the sort will appear in her sketches. I probably shouldn't bring up that got the glasses though, because knowing my luck, a week after I release this video, she'll make a tasteless bondage joke have a mental breakdown, and cause a lot of e-drama which leads to her leaving the site, making me look like a moron because I constantly referred to her as a That Out The Glasses reviewer in my stupid ass video. God damn it, Spoonie. The editing in her reviews has always been pretty good. Her example clips blend in seamlessly with her own audio. She doesn't overuse them, but they're perfectly placed and they support her claims. Everything flows very nicely, but let's talk about some of the flaws. At the very end of her video, she'll sum up her final feelings on screen. In earlier reviews, it would be way too obvious that she was reading from a script. More recently, she's gotten better at covering this up, but she'll make abrupt edits where she presumably has to brush up on her... fuck does that say? Notes. It's glaring and unnecessary, as I don't see why she needs to be on... screen. She could easily use a voiceover for those parts. Strangely, for her recent anime derby project, she doesn't make those edits, but suspiciously she does appear to be glancing at a script. It's weird because she's looking to the right, which I presume is where the script is located, but she also keeps looking down, so I don't know. On the flip side, who really gives a shit? If that's a deal breaker for you, then you have unreasonable expectations. I only bring it up because I'm supposed to be a critic. My job is to suck the joy out of everything. But we all have our weaknesses. She has choppy endings, I have inconsistent lighting, uh, over-reliance on the Triforce, bad... I oh my god, this review is so mean to me. Flaws or not, I really enjoyed her videos. They're insightful, engaging, well-produced, and most importantly, I couldn't give two shits about what she's reviewing, yet I was so impressed that I broke my rule of watch only who you review and viewed all of her videos. I'm giving her a three and a half out of four stars, because there are some problems, but they are minor. If you wish to see her videos, she has a website, a YouTube page, she can be found under the inked reality section of That Got the Glasses. Presuming that she does doesn't make any perverted rapey bondage jokes anytime soon. And the now dead Desu Des Brigade, although you might as well check out the other ones as they are more current and less dead. So definitely check out Heisu Otaku, especially if you're into anime. Be sure to check out my website, follow me on Twitter, and stay tuned till next time. My name is Marshall Horror, and I'm here to tell you that those who cannot do, critique.